Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And today's short screencast is on the box model. Prior to learning about the box model, you must have inline versus block content down solid. So to review, there are three tags that we'll use in this class that are inline. The A tag to make a hyperlink, the image tag, as well as the span tag. Everything else that we'll be using in this class is a block. And you can see the blocks much more clearly when you give them a background color or a border. And that's what we've done in our style sheet. On our H2 tags, we've given that block content a red one pixel solid border and a background color of white. So we can see those blocks pretty clearly. If you're ever wondering where your block is, I recommend this border one pixel red solid rule. The color, the width, and the style can be put in any order. I recommend that you put that rule on any particular block that you're having difficulty seeing. For example, when you have a div, sometimes it's difficult to see where the border of the div is. So we have a div ID outer wrapper that wraps all of our content inside the body. It starts right after the opening body tag and it ends right before the closing body tag. We have a div that wraps all of our content and we've set the width of it to 80% and the margins of left and right to automatic to pull that content in off the edges of the viewport. If I save this style sheet and refresh my page, now I've got a red one pixel border around that outer wrapper div and I can see it much more clearly. So that is very helpful during development to leave these small borders on the block elements so you can see exactly where your blocks are. It becomes really helpful when we start doing multiple columns or moving our blocks around. But back to the box model. Every element is in a box. The block content is in a box that goes border to border. And that's what a lot of times people don't understand because they just see the text and think the block stops there. But oh no, if you're not an A image or span tag, your block goes wall to wall. With the box model visible now, we can talk about the box itself. And the box itself consists of content, padding between the content and the border, and then margin outside of the border. Let's work with those parts of the box with our H2 tag. So we've got padding, and I'm going to put in a padding of 2% rule if I don't specify what sides of the box I want, if I just say padding 2%, it will be applied on all four sides. Let's see how this looks on our web page. So now I've got padding. So padding is between the content and the border. The padding always takes the same color as the element itself. So in my style sheet, I've got a background color of white. So that padding is gonna pick up that white color as well. You cannot color the padding any differently than the background color of the element itself. And of course, after the padding, I have the border and you can modify the border as desired to make it blue. If I don't specify what side I'm working on, then the border will be applied to all four sides. So now I've got a blue one pixel border on all four sides of this. I'll put in margin of 2%. The margin goes outside of the border. So if I save this and refresh it, then you'll see 2% of the width of this element is being taken up by margin now on all four sides. So as you're nudging content around, it's really important to be able to see your box and the background color and the border really help you do that. Now these rules that I've provided are impacting all four sides, padding, border, and margin all have four sides. If you want to specify only one side, then you can do that. So each one of these rules have padding and then four different rules that apply to them. But the rules are listed here in Notepad++ in alphabetical order, but we always go clockwise starting from the top. Padding top, 2%. Padding right, 2%, padding bottom, 2%, and padding left, 2%. Those four rules are equal to padding 
So it would be swifter to write one rule that applies to all four sides than to write four rules if your value for all four sides is exactly the same. Of course, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you want different padding values on the different sides. And then, of course, you could use the different individual rules. Yet another way to specify different padding for the four sides is to use the padding rule, but just do the clockwise top, right, bottom, left syntax and use one padding rule. And that's what I've done with my margin, top, right, bottom, left. That is the same as saying margin top, zero, margin right of auto, margin bottom of zero, and margin left of auto. So margin, padding, and border all have four sides that can be specified individually or with the combination margin or padding rule and just listing each of the four sides in the top, right, bottom, left, clockwise manner. If only one value is listed, that value gets applied to all four sides. Now the border rule is the most interesting of them all. And I'm gonna go down to the border rule here for my H2 to show you all the different variations because I have four sides to the border, obviously, three different properties that I can apply, a color, a size, and a style. So that one rule can break down into 12 rules, four sides times three attributes like this, border, top, color, blue, border, right, color, red, border. I'm gonna give every different side a different color just so this is really obvious when I refresh the page. Now, when you're specifying your individual sides, you do not have to do them in the order of top, right, bottom, left. But because we think clockwise when we're using a combination rule, it's just a good idea to do so. It just makes it easier to read. But that's only one attribute. That's only the color property. Border, left, width, four pixels. So now I've got the color and I've got the width. I also have one more thing, style. Border, top, style, solid. And then there are several other styles. Border, right, style, dotted. Border, bottom, style, dash, border, left, style. We'll do solid again. But one border rule with four sides to the box and three different attributes actually is equivalent to 12 different rules. So let's see what this looks like. And there I have one, two, three, four sides to my box. And each side has a different color, width, and style to the border. It doesn't look great, but it demonstrates just how powerful the border style is. So that's the box model. Every piece of content is in a box that goes wall to wall in the container element. Each box has padding on four sides, border on four sides, and margin outside the border on four sides that you can set in your CSS. Thank you.